Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing fine and are safe and healthy. So today's video is a little different from the videos that I usually put out. This one is more like an informative type of a video. And although I don't like making such videos, but the primary reason I'm making this one is that I have recently been receiving a lot of doubts from people that are starting out in CP or have been doing it for a month or two. And after reading these doubts, I kind of feel that there are a large number of people who are really misguided at this point. So today I will be talking about five mistakes that people generally make when doing CP. And I will also tell you how you can avoid those mistakes to kind of have a better experience in CP. Mistake number one, and this is beating around the bush too much. So this is a mistake that a lot of beginners are making today and which is why I have kept it at the very top. So what I've seen is that people seem to be more interested in getting roadmaps rather than actually solving CP problems and learning new concepts. I understand that it is important for you to know what to do, when to do and how to do when you're just starting out. But you don't need to watch 100 roadmap videos for that. Just one or maybe two is more than enough. The very next step should be to start solving problems on online judges. Just pick up a programming language, get familiar with its syntax and then get into problem solving right away. All those roadmap videos are to help you just get started. It is you and only you who will have to work in order to get good at CP. So your major time should be spent in giving contests, solving problems and learning new concepts. It should not be spent in watching silly YouTube videos that just give you roadmaps and make you feel happy for a short interval of time. So if you too have been making this mistake, you need to stop right away and focus on the stuff that is actually important. Moving on to mistake number two, which is learning a lot of concepts, but not giving contests. This is also a very common mistake that I've seen people making. And I want to tell you that competitive programming is just like chess. You can learn all the tricks and strategies, but you won't improve and get to test your skills unless you actually step into the battlefield. Learning concepts is important, no doubt, but you will have to give contests in order to see how they're actually applied and twisted for different problems. In fact, you don't even need to specifically go and learn concepts. You can just give contests and whenever you feel that there was some concept or some trick that was used in a problem that you had no idea about, just go and learn it. I personally have learned almost 90% of the stuff just by giving contests, reading editorials and upsolving. Also for most of the beginners, you don't have to run after concepts and advanced data structures when you're just starting out. You should work on your problem solving skills and attempt as many contests as possible to see how things work in CP. Learning stuff is like a very minor part in CP, I would say. The major part is building the logic and the ability to solve new problems. And also all these concepts that you're learning, they are actually of no use unless you're actually able to apply them in contests, right? So you can make it a point that from now on, I will give 90% of my time to giving contests and solving problems and the 10% of it to learning new stuff. Mistake number three, not upsolving. Now this is a mistake that is made not only by beginners, but by also very experienced programmers. I made this mistake too when I was starting out. Now, if you don't know what is upsolving, then let me quickly tell you that first. So when you give a contest, there are some problems that you are able to solve and then there are some problems that you're not able to solve. So this process of upsolving is to simply solve those unsolved problems after the contest. And how it goes is like you can spend another half an hour or maybe an hour on an unsolved problem, but then it is recommended to just read the editorial after an honest try. So this thing called upsolving is really very important in CP. If you just give contests and don't upsolve, then you're not actually learning anything new. You're just practicing stuff that you already know about. And the great part about upsolving is that while you learn new concepts, you also get to know the type of problems that they're used in. Now the next time a problem uses some similar ideas, you will have a much better chance of solving it and will probably be able to solve it much faster than a person who has to think about those concepts on the spot. It is not recommended to solve all the unsolved problems after the contest, but you should make it a point to solve at least one problem after each contest in order to push yourself just a little bit above your current level. Do this for a month or two and you will have learned a whole lot of common tricks and ideas in CP. Now, before I move to the fourth mistake, 
there is something that I want to address from a very long time. And this is about beginners asking silly doubts from experienced programmers. So when you go and message an experienced guy asking stuff like how do I improve in CP? Which programming language will be the best for me? Can you give me a complete path to start CP and, good at, and get good at it? Let me tell you that this is very, very irritating and the person you're messaging might not even reply back to you. So stop asking doubts that are googleable or are very vague. Be specific as to what exactly your doubt is and most importantly, don't just leave a hi or a hello and then expect the other person to reply back and then send your doubt. This is insane and has absolutely no sense. This is not Tinder where you need to send in a good flattery message to start the conversation. Everyone in the community wants to help you grow, but this is, but this does not mean that you start spamming people. Okay, let's leave this aside and move to mistake number four. This is worrying too much about ratings. For this, I will not begin by telling you that ratings or rankings are not important because they're certainly important to judge how good you are at CP, but you should not be thinking about them 24 seven. Now there are people who have been doing CP for a month or two and then they tell me that my rating is not increasing. And I'm like, what are you for real? Let me tell you exactly what you've done till now. You've given five contests and solved a bunch of easy problems. Dude, this is not enough to make you an expert in CP. You start getting the hang of it once you have solved some 400 to 500 problems. And here by 500 problems, I don't mean you go to lead code and solve the first 500 problems that are out there. I am talking about real CP problems on Codeforces, Codechef, AdCoder or any other legit CP platform. Also, I don't understand what is the reason to consider this rating thing so important in the first three or four months of your CP journey. The initial rating does not even define your actual level. Let me show you my rating graph for instance. If you look at this region from September 2019 to March 2020, that was the time I was getting to know how things work here. This is the exact region where half of the people give up. Now look at this region from September 2020 to March 2021. You will see that my rating has been more or less constant. Now is the time I need to work on my speed and learn harder algorithms. It does not mean I have to give up or message more experienced people asking for tips to improve my rating. A major reason why people get demotivated and give up too soon in CP is just that the rating is constantly decreasing or has been not increasing for a very long time. First of all, if your rating is decreasing, you should think about working harder rather than thinking about giving up CP itself. Secondly, if your rating curve has been like a flat line for a very long time, then it is a sign that you maybe have hit a saturation point and now is the time you need to learn more concepts and harder algorithms. It might also be a sign that you need to work on your speed as many a times there are people who know a lot of stuff and are very good with problem solving, but just the fact that the speed is not that great, they end up not getting the ranks that they deserve in contests. For learning important concepts, I would say you can try out CSES problem set. I know it is hard to solve problems on CSES as a beginner, but it is okay to read the editorials while solving CSES problems. You can even try out virtual contests on Codeforces to practice in a contest-like environment and work on your speed in contests. So the fifth and last mistake is doing it solo. So I have seen many people doing CP in a very introverted way. They practice problems. When they get stuck, they read the editorial. If there is no editorial, they just skip the problem. They give contests and then after the contest, they don't talk to anybody. They upsolve the problems on their own. Now I won't say that this is completely wrong, but by doing this, you are missing out on so much. When you have two or three other friends who are as much into CP as you are, you automatically get motivated to work harder. Even if one of your friend is giving a contest, you too will get motivated to give that contest. And when you've given the contest, there will definitely be a healthy discussion where you guys can learn from each other's mistakes and possibly get to learn about various other approaches for the same problem. Also, whenever you get stuck on some problem, you will have people to ask for help. Even if you are not able to find people with similar interests in your college or school, you can always join some discord server or a community 
where you will find a lot of people and possibly make some friends as well. You can join my Discord server too, where we discuss problems, play games and even have typing sessions to improve your typing speed. I will leave the link to it in the description and you guys can check it out. Also please don't take this otherwise, I don't mean that you form a whole community and start cheating in contests. So yeah, these are the 5 common mistakes that I've seen people making. I've made some of them too when I was starting out. But I hope after this video you will not only have identified some of your mistakes but would have even found solutions to them. So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to press the like button and if you're new to this channel, you can subscribe for more educational content on CP. I don't post a lot of such informative videos but I do post my contest screencasts, post contest discussions, editorial videos for interesting problems and tutorial videos on some cool concepts in CP. So that is it for this video. I will meet you in another one and till then bye bye.